I built my first PC at the age of nine, and since then I've put together over 30 custom machines. The vast majority of those were Intel, with my last AMD build being almost 10 years ago. That's because if you wanted to build a really powerful system in the last decade, Intel was really your only option. That is until this was released about a week ago. This is AMD's 1700X Ryzen processor, a $399 8-core 16-thread processor that's about as powerful as Intel's $1050 6900K. With this new CPU, I set out to build the best bank for the buck 4K video editing machine and doing so for less money than Intel CPU alone. If you guys enjoyed those shots, hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more videos like this one, hit that sub button. Before we get into benchmarks, I wanna give a big shout out to all the patrons that support our channel. Without them, this video and build would literally not have been made, seriously. As a thank you to them, we created an almost one and a half hour detailed step-by-step -step build guide for this PC, starting from parts and boxes all the way to Windows and driver installation. That video is available on our Patreon page, so if you enjoy our channel and want to support future videos, consider supporting us and getting all the bonuses of being a patron. We'll leave a link to our Patreon in the description, along with the full parts list for the build. As some of you may have noticed, we didn't use the top of the line 1800X CPU. Since it costs 20% more while only offering a 3-5% speed improvement, and our main goal is to build the best performance per dollar machine, which we definitely think we've achieved. To start off the benchmarks, I want to bring up that $1,050 6900K in Cinebench R15, which is a rendering benchmark. Here, it gets an impressive score of 1547, until you see that the $399 Ryzen scores 1537, less than 1% difference. Getting away from Intel's now overpriced 8-core CPUs, I need to compare this build to something more reasonable on the wallet. So I'm going to use my last build with a configuration that's been the most popular bang for the buck 4K editing setup until Ryzen arrived. An Intel 6700K, Nvidia GTX 1070, and 32GB of DDR4 RAM with a total current Amazon parts cost of $1,532. It's a good value system, and my assistant is going to keep using it for a while, but going forward it's no longer the performance per dollar king. Starting off with a Cinebench CPU test, you see that the cheaper Ryzen build is 75% faster. Moving on to GPU, the twice as expensive GTX 1070 takes the lead over the RX 480, but as you'll soon see, the GPU can't be fully utilized unless the CPU, along with the efficiency of your editing program, is up to the task. For those wondering, we did test the GTX 1070 in our Ryzen system to find out which one is the best bang for the buck, and the RX 480, paired with Ryzen, was faster in most tests. So at about half the cost, we chose the RX 480 for our build. Moving on to transcoding, we started off converting 4K H.265 files to H.264. Ryzen was 70% faster. Taking those same clips and transcoding back to H.265, the 1700X was almost four times faster than the Intel processor. Getting into video editing, we'll start off with Premiere Pro. Rendering a five minute 1080p clip with two LUTs and film grain applied, the Ryzen build is about 15% faster. Running the same tests, but in 4K, shows a similar speed improvement. Moving on to the toughest test, which is four 4K clips scaled to 1080p and placed side by side in a 4K project, each with two LUTs and film grain applied, with two clips being reversed, the Ryzen shows a great gain, being 60% faster. One interesting thing to note is when using Premiere, only about 50% of the Ryzen CPU is being used, compared to about 75% with the Intel CPU. This is because of program inefficiencies, so if Adobe improves Premiere, this new AMD system would have even more gains over the more expensive Intel. Now with DaVinci Resolve, Ryzen scored 16% faster in 1080p, but very interestingly, when moving over to 4K, we had a massive difference taking less than half the time. This system seems to strike a perfect chord for 4K editing and grading in DaVinci Resolve. Moving over to our torturous 4x4K test, Ryzen takes the lead, but by only 8% this time. 
If you notice, DaVinci was about five times slower at this task than Premiere Pro. I think there's some sort of a software issue going on because not having two of the 4K scaled clips reversed resulted in about seven times faster render. It must be a bug or something as neither the CPU or GPU was being fully utilized in this test, so if it can be fixed, I'd expect a much larger gain with Ryzen like we saw in Premiere Pro. Rendering isn't everything. You need smooth playback as well, and many people suggest that Nvidia cards with CUDA do a better job at this. Well, in both Premiere Pro and Resolve, both systems played back full resolution 4K video with two LUTs and film grain applied without dropping frames. The Ryzen system, of course, costing only two thirds of the price. In conclusion, I'm really impressed. This is one heck of a machine. In my experience, it's the best bang for the buck video editing machine at this time and most likely for the next few years, unless Intel dramatically drops their pricing, which I don't see them doing. Not only does it come in at just under $1,000, it will cut through 4K video like butter, and the performance will only get better as Adobe and DaVinci optimize their programs for Ryzen. Once again, if you're interested in that detailed step-by-step -step build guide, check out the link to our Patreon page along with the full parts list in the video description. Keep in mind that part prices do fluctuate, so if you want the best deal, you'll need to shop around for the cheapest price on your SSD, RAM, and graphics card like I did, and likely send in a few mail-in rebates. As a caveat, my price was just over $1,000 because I was forced to buy the expensive Nocto cooler since literally only Noctos were available at launch. I'll have some lower cost suggestions in the description to get you to that $998 price. Let me know what you guys think about the system in the comment section below. What do you like about it and what would you do different? Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on future videos. And when you find somebody asking about a video editing computer, make sure you share this video with them. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.